moving on, moving on to the uh, other two gentlemen here, uh, we have Sunil Tulsiani. Now, a very interesting story. He was a police detective who later on became a real estate mogul. So first I thought I was reading the script of some Hollywood script. But then I kept on reading and I thought that this is actually happening. How exactly did that happen? I mean, uh, yeah. How did what happen? As in from police detective to real estate mogul, how did that change happen? Why did that change happen? Why is because uh, my wife came to me and said, I want to have a divorce. And uh, you, we don't see you. You work days, you work nights, and you have two choices, job or the family, which one? So majority of my friends would have chosen job because being a police officer, being a police detective was not doing, I am, I am it. I'm the being of that. So it's not a job for me. It's who I am, who I identify myself. But then I realized that I, I've done it for 15 years and I chose the family. So I gave that up and, and then I didn't know what to do. I had no idea. I had no entrepreneurship skills. I was shy. I was a bad student. Uh, I didn't like schooling and so I can't even go out and say and then somebody says your spelling is bad, your grammar is bad, you know, you're not going to amount to anything, those kind of things. So one day I opened up a newspaper and uh, Mr. Robert G. Allen's ad shows up and says you can buy real estate no money now. Who's going to be at the growth summit uh, tomorrow? Right. Uh, and uh, I took his course. I paid five thousand dollars for the first time in my life. I paid. I hadn't even paid twenty dollars before, but now I paid five thousand dollars. Took his course, and that course changed my life and changed my mindset to mind shift, shifted my mind to say that you can actually invest in real estate if you. And people all over the world said, "Yeah, yeah, that works in Canada, but not in India. It, it cannot happen in India." I would sort of agree. Yes, with them. Yes. Yeah, but. Most of the people who say that, I bet you they're poor. Or the mindset. Like or the said. mindset. Yeah. Because mindset poor. Because obviously people who have money, we know they can do it. So the idea is if you have money, you can grow. But if you have no money, you can grow too. Right. So first of all, I think mindset is very important. And another thing which a lot of the users will take away, the wife can be a very big motivating factor. <laughs> yeah. Moving on to the third gentleman here, whose name is Sne Desai. Now, tell me if I have this right. Sne, at the age of four, started meditating. At the age of 14, he became a yoga charya. And then at the age of 16, um, your father's business failed, you went bankrupt, and that's how your journey to uh, become a transformational coach really happened. Take me through that time. How did you become a transformational coach? And the fact that becoming a yoga charya by the age of 14, don't hear that every day. My father knew that if I just went to school, it's not going to be enough. So he sent me to a meditation class at the age of four, to a psychology subconscious mind goal setting class at the age of six and seven, to a public speaking class at the age of eight and nine. And he inspired me to be on stage at the age of nine. So for the very first time, I'm speaking in front of 150 people when I'm nine. And back in those days, I was known as the youngest speaker in India. I don't know if that's correct. But then that's how it went on. I was, you know, then sent to a yoga class, Reiki, NLP, sales, hypnotherapy, many different subjects were explored. And uh, when my father had financial challenges, that's when I thought that this passion of mine can be converted into profession and I can help my family. That's how it started. It was not out of inspiration, but more out of desperation. Right, right. Okay. Uh, also, just since we are on the same topic, do you think a lot of the stress levels today have sort of gone up because meditation and yoga, these things are missing from people's lives? Or is that is that just a lot of a cliche saying? I surely agree that uh, meditation can help us a lot because today, when we talk about money and success, that's the, you know, most important part, I would say, but equally we have to balance it with our personal life. And that's where, you know, as you know, that 80% of the diseases are becoming psychosomatic. So that's where meditation yoga can surely help. Yeah. Right. Robert, back to you. How did you get involved with the Growth India Summit? This is actually a question for, I mean, all three of you, but to, to start off with you. I don't like involved in what? Uh, in the Growth India Summit. For coming over here and speaking about the summit, the event. Yeah, yeah. Then finally, come up. 
Short and sweet. <laughs> I'm very accurate if I might say. I was just thinking about you were talking about yoga and all that. Yeah. 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 It's crucial. Yeah. Yeah. And what What about you? I mean, are you into any sort of exercise or yoga or meditation? Oh, I should be, but I'm not. <laughs> no, I, I do it, but not. Because you look pretty fit for your age. You look pretty fit for your age. Well, thank you. But anyway, it's I, my my doctor is also from India. Oh. Okay. He's always telling me to meditate. Okay. But too stressed out. I have heard this before. I meditate once in a while, but not all the time. But I agree. It's important. Right. He agrees, but he won't do it very often. Fair enough. <laughs> Uh, last question really, again to Robert to wrap up the interview because I know that they have to rest somewhere else. Um, Robert, I mean you've actually already answered this question uh, through the example which you showed on the board. But um, would you say that entrepreneurship is important for everyone to attain financial freedom or just for a select few? I already know the answer but I want to hear it from you. Well, it depends upon the person. Um, most people could be an entrepreneur. I think everybody could be. For example, in my neighborhood where I live, it's a very rich neighborhood, and my neighbor sends uh, their daughter around and she babysits. So the babysitter is an entrepreneur. So everybody could become one. And the trouble with most people becoming entrepreneurs, they go into a higher tax bracket. That's that's what they can't make. So they work harder, you know, they do it they're smart people generally. Like my doctor, a very smart person. The more money she makes, the more she pays in taxes. But that's not very smart to me. Mm -hmm. But to shift over to the B and the I side, it's a whole other mindset. So that's what we're working on right now. 